day, all you wonderful money masters and treasure hunters out there. I'm your co-host, or your fill-in co-host, I suppose, Steve Rhodes, filling in for Tom O'Brien. Tom is off today, and he'll be back with us uh, tomorrow. Uh, around the uh, markets here, you had the uh, Dow finish up 34 points, S&P's up almost two points. You had the composite down 11, small caps up one, New York Stock Exchange up 11 points, and the NDX leading the market on the way down. Not that it led the market down, but off six-tenths of a percent, down uh, 15 points. Our call number is 877-927-6648. For those of you not familiar with me, I kick things off here at TFNN each and every day, Monday through Friday at 9 a.m. sharp. So if you are wondering not where the market is at, but where the market is going, tune into that show. It's called The Trader's Edge. You can always catch those uh, shows on the archives here at TFNN. Uh, so you can, you can watch it live, just like you're watching us right now. Uh, the archive of those shows on Channel 9. Then Tom and I do a show called The Money Masters. We do that each day from 10 to 11. You can catch the archive of those shows also on Channel 10. Now before we go into the markets, I always like to start off with something. And so today, we're picking a word of the day. And that word, folks, is wealth. In the morning, it would have been discipline. But right now, today, at this show, the word is wealth. And you see, wealth, if you think about it, wealth is a word that conjures up a, a whole wide variety of images you know, mental images. And, you know, some of those mental images, folks, or most of those men mental images are where dreams are made of, where, where all that inspiration comes from and where true incentive is born. Now, to one person, think about it like this. To one person, wealth means having all the money in the world or enough money to do whatever it is, whenever they want in their life. To another, though, wealth just means freedom from debt. To another, though, maybe it just simply means the opportunity. Wealth is just opportunity. For some folks, though, wealth is a number. You know that commercial on television from ING, that commercial, what, you know, what's your number, folks? Is it a million? Maybe it's a gazillion. Maybe you don't even have a number for financial freedom or wealth. But whatever your number is, folks, I'm sure it rings of success, the smell of freedom, the power, influence, pleasure, benevolence, and excitement, folks. Not a bad image of a way to start off today's show, I hope. It's certainly not a bad way for you to be driving home. If you are driving home, be careful on your route home. But how about a wealth of experience? Think about it like that. Because each of us out there, I'm sure, have a wealth of experience. You see, you may be wealthier than you know without even achieving your number, folks. Perhaps you are already wealthy. Now, maybe, maybe what you have Maybe it's not a wealth of experience. Maybe what you've got is a wealth of friends. Maybe it's a wealth of love. How about a wealth of family? How about a wealth of culture? Or so many other things out there that you can be wealthy of. You see, you may be wealthier than you think. Not only may you, I'm certain that you are. Again, my name is Steve Rhodes, and I'm here to help you add to your wealth, add to the wealth that you already have because, folks, you are a wealthy person. If it's financial freedom that you desire, then you're in the right place. It's here at TFNN.com. You see, I make financial freedom a must in my life. I want you to be able to do that, too. I teach you how to do that. We'll teach you here. You can watch us live on Tiger TV. Just go to the homepage at TFNN.com. Click on the button so you can watch us live. You'll take a look at my charts here on the screen. So I leave you with this last question. What is it that you desire, folks? What is your number? Well, our number is 877-927-6648, and I'd absolutely love to hear from you. Again, we had the Dow up 33 points. Uh, we had the S&Ps up 1.8. S&P closing out at 13.2073. What was it doing? The S&P is making a slow crawl, and I do mean a slow crawl, up into the 1340 mark. What's 1340? 1340 happens to be the swing point from March the 6th. That's the low of the swing point out there. It's possible. If this, uh, in what, I thought the market right now, right now today, is really resilient out there, folks. And what I mean by that is when we go take a look at the euro, the euro smash that's out there, it is amazing that our market was flat to up, maybe just a little bit down because the euro is absolutely getting crushed. Anybody who's got euros out there today was selling them. They wanted king dollar. You know, that's what it's all about. So, so really, when you take a look at our markets, even when our market was down, you had the euro come smashing through. It is all about the currency markets, understanding the currency markets. We're going to take a look at that. If you're looking at my screen here, you're going to see one of these uptrend channels that the S&P has been in going all the way back 
into the uh, August or October 4th, uh, two, 2011 time frame. This is one of these Bud Rolf's wonderful channels out there. You want to make sure you've got co-located opens and closes along your trend line. And what happened was the S&P broke through that trend line coming back on May the 14th. Now, it's possible. 1340 is my first target on a bounce, folks. This is nothing more than a bounce. That's my first target. If it can work its way through that area, I can see it moving up to the next swing point. The next swing point would take you into April 10th. The April 10th low is right about 1357. You know what it would do when it gets to 1357? You know one of those things that Bud used to teach us? He would teach us that once you break this channel, you'd go back up and touch it. Well, 1357 will probably get you there. Tomorrow would be a good day. For that to happen, wouldn't it? That would be one heck of a move. It's not going to happen in one day, folks. But you certainly can get to 1340 tomorrow. That would push the markets up 20 points. If we go take a look at the S&P, the SPY, take a look at uh, what was out there on the ETFs. The SPY doing the same thing, closing out at 132.53 today. Up on a little bit lighter volume, and it closed out yesterday. The price point was 132.27. Again, the today, 132.53. Not a lot of movement. Volume that you had in the SPYs, 163 million. Uh, what you've got up at that swing point at March 6, though, 201 million uh, shares. If we go back and we take a look at the uh, Dow, let's do that. See where the uh, Dow was trading at. You had the Dow close out at 12,529.75. The Dow doing the same thing. Now, where the Dow is headed to, folks, you can see this uptrend channel that the Dow has been in also broke through on May the 9th. So broke through a little bit later, and the Dow headed back to the March 6th swing point low. That number, 12,734. You're trading out right now at 12,529. If we go take a quick look and see what it's really all about, well, first I'll go ahead and put up King Dollar. You got King Dollar today making a 1 to 1.272. A to B equals C to up. That price projection, projection 82.54. Where does it get to? 82.54, right on the money. How does that work, folks? Uh, and the dollar index today having some juice in it as well. Uh, did 35,680 contracts yesterday. He did 33,000 contracts. So the dollar index not, not pulling back at all. You didn't have our markets up. And if we go see what that's all about, you know, if you're going to be a king, you got to have a queen. And that queen out here is the euro. If we go take a look at the euro, I will first put up the weekly chart on the screen. In fact, the weekly chart is really the only one that you really have to pay attention to. And when we take a look at the weekly chart, folks, what we're taking a look at is we're going all the way back. What the euro is doing now is it is testing, 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 and breaking through the swing point that goes all the way back to August of 2010. You go back and take a look at our charts in August 2010, and you'll see that's where our markets moved up big time. There was a two planetary index date out there. That was a big event. You've had the two planetary index uh, dates uh, in the uh, past on Friday, this past uh, last Friday, as well as Monday. This area right here, in my opinion, and that low being 1.25831. You're trading out right now at one point. 25348. So you're well underneath that low, but the week doesn't end until tomorrow. This tells us not just trouble in River City, folks. This is a a meltdown over within the euro because you get a close blow here on the weekly basis. What it sets up in a heartbeat is going down and testing the low at 118754. You want to make sure, folks, that you are protecting your assets. Your long-term money, you've heard me say this before, it's a good thing to have it on the sidelines right now. When you take a look at your long-term money that's out there, I'm talking about 70% of the people that have their wealth is basically in their 401k. And you've got options where you've got maybe four or five boxes that you can check. I promise you one of those options is to go to cash. Uh, if it were me, folks, I would say now is an excellent time to step aside, let these markets work themselves out. Because in those accounts, unless they're self-directed accounts, you typically can't go short the markets and just step aside because you will come out smelling like a rose, folks. And if this market decides to take off to the upside, all you got to do is check a box and you'll be back right in it. You're looking for the euro to close tomorrow above 1.25831, 877 That's our number, folks. Love to hear from you. We'll be right back.